Okay, so here we're looking at a practical which is going to talk about the discharge of a capacitor. And there is a, an associated theory lesson to this, but uh, which I advise you to watch first. However, we're going to set up a, an obvious circuit in order to try and discharge a capacitor. Here is my circuit. What I've got is a cell to start with, then a capacitor, and then I have a resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place here a switch that will ch change from a position of charging to a position of discharging. There is my switch. Point A, point B. I have a capacitor, I have a resistor, and I have a cell that provides a voltage. And if we can remember the equation, the voltage after a period of time is going to equal the initial voltage, e to the minus t over rc. There is our equation. And this is an exponential decay. So what that means is that over a period of time, there will be a decay which is proportional to, so this decay is proportional to the amount of voltage we have initially. So the same proportion decreases over the same time period. But that is dictated by this equation here. Okay, a little bit of theory first. and how we're going to justify whether this is correct, because it's really hard to know whether that's a 1 over x, a 1 over x squared, or exponential graph. So how are we going to prove that that's exponential? What we're aiming to do is look to create an equation uh, a, a, to draw a straight line on a graph. So we're going to change this with a little bit of algebra to make life easier for us. So let's take a natural logarithm of both sides. And hopefully you'll be able to appreciate that when we take a natural logarithm, the, the exponential has disappeared. And what was a power has come down to a multiple. And what was a multiple has now turned into an addition. With a little bit more rearrangement, I could write this as LNV not LNV, sorry, equals minus 1 over RC by T plus LNV0. And that is in the similar to the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. So now if I were to plot a graph, but this time I plot LNV against t, we should get a nice straight line in which my intercept is LNV0 and my gradient is 1 over RC. And, of course, there's the negative there, implying it's a negative gradient. So it wouldn't be wrong of me to write that. So that's how we're going to test to see whether this has an exponential decay about it. We are going to plot LNV against T and see whether there's a nice straight line and whether the points sit on that straight line. Okay, so what am I going to therefore require? I'll try and move that out of the way. My independent variable here is going to be the time at which I take the recordings. I'm then going to look at the potential difference across the capacitor. I'm going to do it once, twice, three times in an average. And then once I've got the PD across the capacitor in volts, I'm then going to look to ln the V, which is actually dimensionless. So I move from my 
independent variable, which is the time I've decided to take it over, and the dependent, which is the PD across the capacitor, and then I'm going to do something extra with it. And when I've taken the times, I'm probably going to look to take about every five seconds to start with, and then I will probably expand that to 10 seconds, and then probably 20 seconds, etc. Because I know that the, um, the amount diminishing is most early on, and then it's a little later on. Good. So there is my table of results. Good. So shall we see what the actual um, practical looks like? Let's take a look at it just here. So let me just quickly draw over this. Here is my battery. Oops, let me get that in a different color. This is my battery. It comes across. There is my switch. Here is my capacitor. I then have my resistor through here, and then this is my voltmeter between the two. A, B, charging position, discharging position, and that is my setup. So if I just try and get rid of all that writing, and I shall bring the video back in, and we shall see it happen in reality. My setup. Good. So, what do we have? I have my battery here, a uh, battery of cells, and then it moves to my switch, which when in this position here will allow this capacitor to charge. A note about the arrangement, most capacitors will have this uh, bit that says negative on it. Make sure you do cor correctly connect that capacitor so the negative side must be on the negative, otherwise it's not going to behave as it ought to. Then when I move to position B, it then discharges through a resistor and I have in effect a separate circuit to go for the discharge through the from the capacitor to the resistance. And finally I have my voltmeter in parallel with my capacitor. So when it's in position A, <clears throat> it's now held at the voltage of the cells. And as I move to position B, it starts to discharge through the resistor, through this resistor here. And the energy stored on this is going to be dissipated in the resistor. And you can see it's, it's going to happen over a time period. Let's go back to A. And so in effect, what I will do is start as I switch. And you'll see the time ticking away as the discharge over the capacitor happens. Good. It looks a bit of a muddle, but hopefully we are seeing this circuitry and that, how that's set up there. Good. Now you can do this with a number of different resistors, and so I've got a lot of them there, and a number of different capacitors as well. However, essentially what you're looking to do is you're looking to produce this to confirm its exponentiality and to work out R and C, the capacitance and the resistance. Good. Okay, so that uh, makes good sense. So that was done and conducted, the experiment was, and then uh, I gathered some results. So let me just call up those results. Here they are. Uh, I took this from a... Let me just see if you can see that. I took this from a Google Drive, and there are my results. I hope that's quite clear to see. There we go, straighten them up. So, um, 
time. So I said I was going to go down in 5 second intervals, then it jumped to 10 second intervals for this period, and then it jumped from there to 20 second intervals. Voltage once, twice an average, and then I've got ln of this average. And then I'm, and I'll just pause there, or you can pause there, to take a, a picture of those and to copy down those results if you like. These, the link to these results will be in the link below the video. But there are my results, and now we're going to look to look at the graphs. So there is the first graph. And what I failed to do there is add in the axes, so let me write these in. This is looking at the voltage in volts across the capacitor, and this is looking at the time in seconds. And you can see that this nice curve, which I'm going to attempt to draw a nice smooth line to, should be exponential. In other words, we're looking at V is v naught e to the minus t over rc. Good. And, or should I say, our most important part is whether plotting ln, here we go, whether plotting ln v, against T gave us that nice straight line, which it does really nicely. So we can say that that is exponential. In actual fact, a few um, values here. I said the gradient should equal 1 over RC, which it's given here as minus 0 0.021. The resistance used was 10 kilo ohms which is the same as 10 to the 3 ohms, and the capacitor was 4200 microfarads, which is the same as saying 4200 um, times 10 to the minus 6, which of course cancels to be that 1000 10 to the minus 3. So actually, RC when you multiply them together, it's going to be 1 times 10, sorry, 10 times 10 to the 3. Let me get that right. 10 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3. They cancel, giving us 42. And therefore, 1 over RC is 1 over 42 which is the same as 0 0.024. Hopefully, you can see that this figure here and that figure there are very similar. So, the theory matches. Or at least, should we say, the theory matches. Okay, good. Well, I hope all that's made sense.